Last night, I got a text from my brother Walter. It was about the atrial fib study with the Apple Watch. Thank you very much, Walter. This is a big, big deal. And what gets me is I don't think people are understanding what a big deal it is. They're focusing on the technology. That's not the point. The point is the atrial fib. And actually, the atrial fib is not the point. Stroke prevention is the point. Atrial fib is not just something you can ignore. In fact, it's true. We're finding more and more people have atrial fib, but don't know it because it, you really don't have symptoms. If you have symptoms, you can have a little fluttering in your chest and then it's gone, usually. So what's the big deal about atrial fib and stroke? Atrial fibrillation is the most common um, heart dysrhythmia. It increases your probability of stroke by 5 to 10. So <clears throat> what was interesting was uh, it was presented at the ACC conference, uh, the American College of Cardiology. I think it may have been in New Orleans. I don't remember. Uh, don't really, really care where it was because, again, I'm focused on the potential for stroke prevention. Let's go through the, uh, through the study. Um, actually, I, I will have, we'll have to make the comment. A lot of the cardiologists, a lot of the docs were saying, well, this is going to overload our system. This is not that big of a deal. Uh, I think you already know my response to that. But again, we'll get to that a little bit later. Let's talk about the study itself. Uh, there were 419,000 people enrolled. Here's how it worked. If the watch picked up um, five out of six uh, irregular pulses within 48 hours, then it uh, notified the, the owner. One half of 1% received warnings. Now think about this. The people that are really, the population that is really um, at risk for atrial fib tends to be more of the baby boomers, 50, 60, 70 year olds. Um, those folks are, well, some of them are wearing Apple watches, but not a whole lot. Again, I've been focusing on uh, encouraging people to buy iCardia, which is what I use to detect my own atrial fib. So again, I, I hope this will start getting people to think and maybe change the market for the Apple watch. I personally, Never bought one because it seemed to me a great way to get interrupted by emails. Um, but now I'm changing my mind. Anyway, back to the study. Uh, if the patient, uh, the owner was warned, it also sent a, uh, a notice to a study doc. The study doc then would have a video consult with the patient and decide whether or not they should be sent a patch. The patch is like a Holter monitor. It's a medical grade uh, patch which monitors your heart rate over a uh, two-week, three-week three week period depending on what kind of patch it is. One of the problems with those patches is uh, you may not get another uh, atrial fib for another two or three weeks. That's why something like a personal device is so important for this issue, for, for detecting paroxysmal atrial fib. 650 received the patch, 450 returned the patch. 150 new atrial fibrillation patients were detected. So we now have the uh, potential for saving 150 people from stroke. Uh, how big a deal is that? Well, uh, stroke has... You know, this business group here, Startup Jungle, has recognized that uh, stroke has created a major new business opportunity and people should be getting on the bandwagon open up, opening up adult daycare. There are other reasons for adult daycare, but again, uh, why not prevent the stroke in the first place? So <clears throat> here's what cardiologists had to say about the Apple Watch uh, new monitoring, heart monitoring feature. Uh, there'll be a lot of false positives. My response is the false positives already got screened out. You saw in, this, in the study. We're talking about a half a percent. Again, a relatively healthy population, I'm assuming. But uh, this is what you want to find. You want to find people that have atrial fib and don't know it. Again, to prevent decades worth of being in a wheelchair. 
They also said, well, too many people will get worried. Um, really? And it would overload the medical system. Well, again, I'm not going to respond to that. Now, <clears throat> I'm responding to the naysayers here. There were plenty of cardiologists there, I'm sure, who were very excited about it. And if you look on the Internet, there are a lot of uh, cardiologists that are encouraging use of these types of devices. As I've said, I uh, detected my own atrial fib a couple of years ago using this device, iCardia. I'm a long-distance runner, and I have 4Q25 um, the atrial fib gene homozygous, so I knew that I uh, had some significant risk. Um, I diagnosed my own with it. Again, you don't have to be a doctor to do that. As you saw, these patients uh, diagnosed theirs with the help of an a, an Apple Watch and uh, an app, which communicated between the Apple Watch, the doc, and themselves. Is it um, perfect? No, none of these are perfect. Are there false positives? Of course there are false positives. But here's the thing. An Apple Watch is there, and iCardia is there when you start feeling the fluttering. Um, one of the major problems with undetected atrial fib is what are you going to do? Go to a doctor and ask for a, for a patch every time you uh, feel a flutter? So why I'm obviously passionate about this. So let's talk about why, and I'll try to keep that to a minimum. But some statistics. Every year, strokes kill 140,000 Americans. Almost about three-quarters of a million have a stroke each uh, year. That's one out of every 20 deaths. And again, 140,000 deaths out of 795,000 strokes. Every 40 seconds, somebody has a stroke. And every, 40, every four minutes, someone dies of a stroke. You want to talk about um, overloading the medical system with false positives from an Apple Watch atrial fib detector? Think about this. Strokes cost the United States an estimated $34 billion with a B each year, including health care services, medicines to treat stroke and miss days of work, not including wheel, uh, you know, some of the wheelchair devices, some of the uh, personal care devices, not including uh, home ramps, wheelchair ramps. Stroke is the leading cause of long-term disability, and stroke reduces uh, mobility in more than half of stroke survivors age 65 and older. So let me just repeat that for the baby boomers. If you're 65 and older and you have a stroke, you're probably going to get disabled, significantly disabled. And guess what? It's not disabled for a week or a month or a year. It's the rest of your life. So <clears throat> why am I uh, so concerned about atrial fib? Uh, hi doesn't hypertension cause more strokes than atrial fib? Yes, hypertension is far more common. In fact, over half of Americans have... Uh, heart-related uh, disease, and a huge number of people have, um, have hypertension these days. Go back and look at some of my other videos covering some um, uh, recent headlines in the area. So, yes, uh, hypertension is associated with four out of five strokes, uh, but atrial fib is associated with one out of five. We're starting to get a handle on hypertension, but... Uh, atrial fib people just do not know about. Um, and why don't we think about people with, why don't we, again, think about people with stroke? Because they're hidden in their home. It's not, e it's not easy to get out to go to church or to a restaurant anymore after you've had a stroke. Your life is focused on um, gaining, gaining whatever mobility you can to get uh, to the bathroom or to the uh, kitchen. Um, <clears throat> one out of three U.S. adults have at least one of the major risk factors, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, obesity, and diabetes. And as I said, that's an old, uh, overly conservative number. Now, here, where, where, I sound like somebody screaming, uh, crying wolf. I am. But here's the reason. There is a major reason for us to focus on stroke these days. Even the CDC, with a very conservative estimate, is saying, look, four out of 
of five strokes are preventable. One of the major ways we can do that is find the people that have major risk for stroke because of atrial fib. Uh, again, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest.